when Sebastian sang, Life is better down where it's wetter under the sea, he was either lying or misguided. Because life is not better down where it's wetter. In fact, it's kind of awful because the animals who are down there just can't seem to get along. These are sea animals that hate each other. Number 15. Killer Whale vs. Blue Whale the killer whale is without a doubt the ocean's most awesome predator. There's nothing out there that has more pure power and attacking ability than the orca. But that doesn't mean it's the biggest creature in the sea. There are whales which are even bigger than killer whales. And the biggest of them all is known as the blue whale. Blue whales are insanely huge, and in fact, they are the biggest animals in the entire history of the world. That's pretty big. But they aren't quite as terrifying as killer whales, as they only eat tiny little creatures, which they filter through their mouths. How do these two measure up when they get in one another's space? Well, in the waters around Western Australia, it's actually a pretty common sight to see killer whales attacking blue whales, which is just crazy. Normally, the blue whale has nothing to fear, but the world's most insane predator has found a way to act actually successfully hunt them. But it's not without risk. One swipe of that massive blue whale tail could do some serious damage. And blue whales are also fast in spite of their size. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. Did you know that sharks and dolphins hate each other? No. Well, now you do. The main reason why is that both are carnivores, and they both like to go to the same spots to hunt. Given the reputation of sharks, you'd think they're the ones scaring dolphins away when sharks and dolphins meet at one of these hunting spots. But no, quite the reverse. Sharks are arguably a bit scared of dolphins and will flee when they see them. Crazy, right? As always, comment down below with the hashtag Hashtag juicy topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Number 14. Tiger Shark vs. Hammerhead Shark the tiger shark and the hammerhead shark are two of the largest and most impressive sharks in the ocean. Normally, they would be smart enough to stay out of one another's way, but sometimes it's just not possible, and they're forced to go head to hammerhead. Back in 2016, this amazing footage was shot in the Gulf of Mexico by a student on a fishing trip. The hammerhead is at a pretty big disadvantage, given that it's stuck on a fishing line, but the tiger shark isn't looking for a fair fight. Fight. He's just there for the easy bullying, and the tiger shark heads right in to attack his enemy. Finally, after several minutes of endless attack, the tiger shark grabbed the hammerhead by the head, broke the fishing line, and dragged him down into the depths. Brutal. It was an incredible thing to see and catch on film, says Ryan Wilsey, who made the video with his brother Aaron, and whose line caught the hammerhead. So the hammerhead never really stood a chance, which is kinda too bad. The tiger shark is known as the garbage can of the sea, as they will eat pretty much anything, including other sharks and even humans, if they get the chance. Number 13. Octopus vs. Shark this is a contest between two creatures that have totally different skill sets. A real choose your fighter kind of mix up, where one is all brains and tentacles, while the other is all about the teeth. And yet, octopuses often attack smaller sharks and kill them. The question is how they manage to do it. And there are in fact a variety of methods the octopus will use to take on a shark and win. Some octopuses will use their tentacles to hold the shark in place, and then their beaks to attack it and kill it. Other octopuses have venomous bites, and all they need to do is land one bite, and that shark is in big trouble. Even tiny little octopuses like the blue-ringed octopus can be super deadly. Otherwise, the bigger guys will use their beak to sever the spinal cord or bite into the brain and other vital organs, which is pretty rough for the shark. It's not too common, but in one aquarium, they actually put a giant octopus and some small sharks in the same tank, thinking they would be fantastic buddies, but it turned out that the octopus murdered all the sharks and threw the bodies away. So not such great buddies after all. Number 12. Giant Blue Crab vs. Giant Mantis Shrimp 
The mantis shrimp is one of the craziest creatures in the ocean, and scientists are performing a lot of studies on this unusual crustacean. It has incredible strength and also unusual eyesight and molecular structure. These are fast and tough killing machines, and if you are in the ocean, you do not want to mess with these guys. They are only around 4 inches long, but this is one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters out there. And they are the strongest animals in the world for their size. Their punch is so strong they break glass tanks, so need special plastic tanks. As you can see in this battle, the giant blue crab, which has some big claws of its own, stands almost no chance against the angry giant mantis shrimp. That shrimp is just hunting him down, and unfortunate for Mr. Crab, there's only one outcome. which is victory for the Floyd Mayweather of the sea, Mr. Giant Mantis Shrimp. So if anyone ever calls you a shrimp, you can just be like, yeah, Giant Mantis Shrimp you mean, and then you can punch through a glass wall or something to make your point. Actually, maybe don't do that last part. That can be pretty dangerous. Number 11. Giant Squid vs. Sperm Whale now you may have heard a lot of stories from old sailors about terrifying sea monsters, especially if you live in New England and it's about 90 years ago. But if you haven't, then head up to Nantucket and look out for the guy with a beard, clay pipe, thick sweater, and wooden leg, because he probably lost that leg escaping from a real sea monster. such as the giant squid or the sperm whale. The sperm whale is the largest toothed predator on Earth, which is pretty awesome, and the giant squid is a giant squid, which is also awesome, and they fight. The squid can weigh as much as 600 pounds, so they are no joke, and their tentacles are strong enough to tear the skin off a sperm whale. Normally the whale will come out on top, but since these fights were first observed in 2009, there have been many cases where things didn't do according to plan for the whale, and it came away with some nasty injuries. Sperm whales have the biggest brains in the world and an amazing echolocation system to make their attacks laser-guided. But the giant squid is basically the living spawn of the Lord Cthulhu, so, you know, watch out for that. Number 10. Turtle vs. Crawfish Here's another battle between two ferocious but tiny fighters with very different skills. The crawfish is a freshwater crustacean, which is related to lobsters. And the study of crawfish is known as astacology, which is not to be confused with the whole thing that tells you Geminis are evil. There are a lot of crawfish living in the waters of North America, and the most interesting thing about crawfish is how literally amazing they taste on July 4th after about 18 beers served up with some corn. Evolution really nailed it with this crustacean when it comes to being tasty. If they wanted not to be caught, why did they evolve to taste so good? Anyway, they are fast movers, and that's their best hope against the ferocious snapping turtle, which is not something you normally normally eat on July 4th, even in Louisiana. And as you can see, this patriotic little turtle is doing his part for freedom-loving people all over the world by tearing the head off this tasty crawfish and eating it. Number 9. Penguins vs. Seals Life as a penguin is pretty amazing, as long as you're in the water. There, you are in perfect harmony with your surroundings, a zen master of agility, speed, and hydrodynamics. But unfortunately, penguins are birds, and that means there's a bunch of stuff they need to take care of on land too. Suddenly, out of the water, they're just little fat guys in dinner suits who can barely stand up and definitely can't fly. This would be just fine if it weren't for all the massive seals hanging around waiting to eat the penguins, and these penguins have a huge number of seals just blocking their way. Seals aren't exactly at their best on land either, but if a penguin gets too close, it's not going to be a good day. But they have to get back to their nests somehow. Solution? Just jump right over the seals onto their backs and then run. Or kind of wobble and, like drunk guys, get back to the safety of the nest. These penguins totally outmaneuvered and fought off these seals in a true battle of nature's clumsiest. Number 8. Seahorse vs. Flounder 
Seahorses are pretty weird fish, as far as weird fish go. First of all, they do look like horses and were around way before horses ever evolved. They have a curled prehensile tail, which they use for grab and hold of stuff, and they have a segmented body which has bony armor. They live all over the world and tend to make their way along the sea floor in a pretty chilled way. However, this seahorse had the fright of his life when part of the seafloor turned out to be alive, and in fact it was a heavily camouflaged flounderfish that looks just like the seabed around it. The flounder pounces on the seahorse as it's minding its own business, just bumbling along, but luckily for the seahorse, the flounder doesn't seem to like the taste of horse meat. Clearly this is not an Italian flounderfish. Or maybe it's all the spiky armored defenses doing their job and protecting the seahorse. Horse. The seahorse looks pretty chill afterward, but then there's not much it could have done anyway. Since the seahorse is the slowest moving fish in the world, another cool feature is that seahorses can move their eyes completely independently of each other. Apparently, there are also some humans who can do this, so try it out right now. Okay, maybe don't. You'll look just a little stupid. Number 7. Starfish vs. Clam if you were hoping for speed, power, agility, then I have got the fight for you. The starfish versus the clam. Oh wait, no, it's the total opposite of that. This is definitely not the Clash of the Titans. Neither one of these guys is running into battle screaming, this is Sparta. But this doesn't make life any easier for the clams that have to live with starfish because they will eat you if you're a clam. Because clams are tasty. However, don't invite a starfish over for dinner if you're someone who is into table manners because a starfish cannot use a knife and fork. Also, they eat by extending the stomach out of its mouth and over the digestible parts of its prey, and then prey tissue is partially digested externally before the soup-like chowder produced is drawn back into its ten digestive glands, which is pretty gross. Starfish are also hungry and they will demolish a population of clams or other shellfish in a pretty short time if the number of starfish gets too many, and this can have a negative environmental mental impact. So in some places, there are scientists working on trying to control the numbers of starfish to help things like the Great Barrier Reef recover. Number 6. Pacific Triton vs. Clown of Thorn Starfish the crown of thorn starfish is a little more intense than the regular starfish from the previous topic. First, they are literally named for the thing Jesus had to wear on his head while he was being crucified. So they're not the kind of starfish that are easygoing and fun to invite to parties, more like a death and suffering kind of starfish. The triton is also named for some intense religious mythology, as triton was the son of Poseidon, Greek god of the sea. So this is a pretty pretty amazing religious showdown between JC himself and the son of his pagan enemy Triton, only in the form of a starfish and a snail. For 2,000 years, people have been arguing over whether Christianity or European paganism is best, and finally we have a matchup which will decide the spiritual future of about half the world. And the winner is… the snail! In fact, Triton's snail totally demolished the crown of thorn starfish, which kinda makes sense as Triton was absolutely ripped while Jesus was kinda skinny. However, these starfish are extremely numerous and also highly toxic, just like Christians. So the Triton snail is one of the very few creatures able to eat them and help control their massive population. Number 5. Nudie Branch vs. Anemone Here's another pair that might not be the first that come to mind when you're thinking of awesome sea predators, but let's not be hasty, the nudie branch is a mollusk related to slugs and snails. Its name actually does mean nude or nude gills, to be precise, which is a pretty weird but also really cool nickname. Anyway, they have a bizarre structure like a tooth, which they use to scrape their prey off the rocks they're stuck to, like this anemone for example, and they then 
inject the prey with pre-digestive enzymes so it starts breaking down before it has even died, which is like something from the Middle Ages. They are also brightly colored, which comes from the bright colored things they like to eat. So this bright orange naked snail rolls right up to an unsuspecting anemone, then use a special tooth to attack it and begin digesting it before it has even died. This thing is the stuff of pure nightmares. They also eat sponges, coral, hydroids, barnacles, fish, eggs, sea slugs, and other nudie branches, so basically nothing is safe. Just stay out of the water, kids. Number 4. Sea Snake vs. Eel now we have the contest between the two most famous animals that didn't bother to evolve legs. Sea snakes live primarily in the Southeast Asian and Australian region. Related to the venomous cobra family, sea snakes have some of the most powerful venom of any species. They're not known to be aggressive, but when they want to bite for real, it's pretty bad news for whatever gets bitten. Moray eels don't have any venom, but they are insanely badass all the same. Same. They are strong and have a kind of double jaw that resembles the alien in the film Alien. They are pretty terrifying. Who wins? Well, usually the sea snake, but a lot of sea snakes that sea snake specialists find have some very intense scars from their battles with the moray eels. Some sea snakes are actually amphibious, but most kinds are true sea snakes which live underwater all the time, and they are pretty dominant in their domain. Domain. As you can see, their fights are really pretty crazy, and they end up fighting one another plenty of times. Sea snakes can eat moray eels, which are almost their own size, but a moray eel is definitely not the easiest meal in the sea. Number 3. Electric Eel vs. Crocodile now we're going to look at a totally different kind of eel. In fact, it's so different, it's not really an eel at all, but a kind of knife fish. But it is known as the electric eel, and it is one of the craziest animals in the world. These animals can generate enough electrical charge to kill a horse stone dead. Their bodies are primarily made up of organs which produce electricity, and they can pump it out at insanely high voltages, way higher than the average wall socket can produce. They also use electricity for other things like navigation. Unusually for fish, they breathe air, and they lurk in muddy parts of the Amazon River. So anything else that lurks there needs to watch out, and that even includes crocodilians such as this unfortunate caiman, which ended up in a tangle with an 8-foot long electric eel, which was hitting it with a massive 600 volts of electrical power. Caiman are not used to having to worry too much about other things living in the water, so this must have come as a shock to the poor crocodilian. Shock? You see, you see what I did there? Well, this eel showed the croc just who was in charge. See, I did it again. Number 2. Prana vs. Barracuda how about two of the most badass fish in the entire world going head to head? You've probably heard of the Piranha series of horror movies. Well, they were like Jaws, but with way smaller fish. There was about five movies, including the latest one, Piranha 3 D, which had all the hottest young action stars of 2012, such as Gary Busey and uh, David Hasselhoff. The piranhas didn't stand a chance against the Hoff, you'll be glad to know. Anyway, they aren't fighting the Hoff this time, but a huge barracuda. Well, it could be kind of tricky because piranhas are a freshwater fish and barracudas live in the deep ocean, so they're not super likely to meet, but that didn't stop this crazy kid from trying to recreate this scene in his home aquarium with a piranha and a fish that kinda looks like a barracuda, only about four feet shorter. Mm, kinda. Anyway, they seem like they are ready to go mano a mano, but in the end they just swim around doing fish stuff, which I guess is no real surprise seeing how they're fish and all. Number 1. Coconut Crab vs. Red Crab 
Now for the final decider. Which crab will rule all the crabs? The coconut crab or the red crab? Well, I guess one look ought to tell you that this is kind of a David versus Goliath situation. That coconut crab is seriously huge compared to the red crab. Not only that, when considered relative to body size, the pincer power of the coconut crab is the strongest pressure any animal can apply. Other than the jaws of a saltwater crocodile, they can literally crack open coconuts with those things, but it ain't over yet, because the red crabs have a special power of their own, unity. Togetherness. I'm talking about teamwork, because together we can do anything, face any challenge. Am I right? Well, no, I am not right, because while they are still debating their strategy, the coconut crab penetrates a red crab's brain with a claw without even trying, and all the other red crabs just kind of stand around and watch, and then it kills another one, so actually being together is nice and all, but the best way to win is to be way more powerful than your enemies, and then just obliterate them for fun. Watch those red crabs run, though. They figured it out soon enough, at least. Which of these battles were the most epic? What other animals truly hate each other? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.